Yo, what's going on, everybody? It's your boy Tactical Chaos One, and we are here with some Ghost of Tsushima Legends gameplay with the Rathless Harigami. This build is actually pretty damn dope. I mean, I've done videos with a uh, kind of similar build, but I wanted to go ahead and drop another one, seeing as Legend is now on PS Plus. So we're gonna probably get a lot of new players playing the, uh, you know, online card of Ghost of Tsushima. So I wanted to drop a, uh, a build video for any new or returning players. If you guys are new to the channel, this is Tactical Chaos One. It's my gaming channel I've been working on over the last year. So everybody that's been with me, you guys are super awesome. I really appreciate your support. And also, you know, uh, to the new guys, I appreciate you guys your support too. If you guys want to help me on the road with one k subs, then hit that subscribe button real quick. And hit that bell to go to all my ghost of Tsushima pictures, guys, gameplay, walkthroughs. So I decided to go on uh, solo on this um, legend story so I can show you guys how the build works better than when I have a teammate taking my kills. I also have healing carry on here and intimidating counter as you can see it causes some damage to your right and lose some damage. I also heal myself when I kill you with the carry. Come on boy, what's up watch? Now that my life's down you can see it heal. This build is an absolute beast, for real. No joke, and it's also extremely fun to play with. The Mongol's hand clasped a scroll, outlining the path of Sukhubatar's army. The ghosts set out in pursuit. And if you guys want to stick through and watch some more gameplay, you guys are welcome to. Or you guys can skip ahead to the build specs, which will be at the end of my gameplay. Ghost followed the path until they came across a small, quiet village. I swear I heard something. So, also, if my health is down too, I got blood strikes on, which while my class ability is active, it heals me. The bears bellowed for the flesh of the ghosts. <laughs> Okay, it sounds like I hear a bear up here. No, I do. Oh, well, I guess I kind of wasted that uh, ultimate ability. <laughs> I haven't even had to use my blood strikes, which is just, it's super dope. Okay, where the hell are we at? Oh, right there.
up, homeboy? Puddles of blood, darkened the floor. There was no leading out of the village. You know, I think I'm going to name this build Untouchable. Because for real, you are untouchable with this build. Thank you for my health back. Much appreciated. Oh, that was dope. That was fucking insane. My intimidating counter the literally of the laid Mongols them all out. For the insignia of Sugabata. The ghosts were on the right track. I'm most definitely gonna have to go back and watch that again. That was hella sick. Ghosts heard only dogs barking and snarling in the distance.
building slowly dissipated. See, what makes this build a little bit different than my last Wrath of Saragami build is I'm not using Forbidden Medicine. And the reason why is I have two other ways to heal myself with this build. So I get to make my melee damage higher without having to have the extra legendary item. The spirits vanquished in the fog. Faded away. Around the docks floated slowly down the river. Where the hell are the rest of the enemies at? No, we got a dog right over here. Suddenly, Sukhbatar's voice boomed throughout the village. Come, ghosts. Alright. Heavy footfalls there. approached. The ghosts readied themselves for battle.
Sukubatar's dreadful warnings had covered his escape. The ghosts moved on from the decimated village. Knowing more would be suffer the same fate if Sukubatar wasn't found and defeated. Okay, so I hope you guys enjoyed that video or, you know, like the way the build is operating. I think this build is extremely OP and hella fun to use. I mean, just a perfect parry, you know, non-stop parry and healing yourself and all that. It's just really good sword play. And I absolutely love this build, so I hope you guys like it too. And like I said, I told you guys I'd give you the specs on how to put this build together at the end of the video. So here we are. We are going to go over our techniques first. And show you guys what I got so that way when you see the gear the techniques will be explained with it So um, we got class ability raging flame heavy attacks with this burning blade can also ignite nearby enemies Along with um, the first perk increased melee damage by 10% Second perk healing strike killing an enemy with a perfect parry counter Restores 50 health and that's what you guys see me keep restoring my health with my perfect parries and you got three chances to get that so it works really well and um, perfect parries are extremely easy to use with this build and then I got uh, two extra strikes for um, my ultimate ability which I don't use it too much but when I do it works and it helps out a lot if you guys really did want to say you're not going to use your uh, ultimate ability at all you could go over to Heavenly Strike and then you'll have a quick unblockable strike to go with your sword play. Or you could just add another legendary to your build. But this is the way I got mine for this personal build. Now for the gear. Okay, for my sword I got uh, Wrath of Saragami, which is... Regular parry is disabled. Perfect parry becomes a chain of three attacks. That's how you see me keep... Uh, whenever I par parry the enemy then I can hit them with two more parries. It's awesome. Then I got a perfect parry window at 12%. Counter damage at 20%. That's uh, the damage inflicted from the perfect parry. And then intimidating counter on it. Perfect parry counter attacks have a 50% chance to also deal uh, damage to nearby foes. And that's what you've seen in the video when you see that explosion. during That little like explosion of energy when you do your perfect parry. That's intimidating counter doing its part. And then, um, so for this particular build, I took off my, um, Forbidden, uh, Medicine because I do got two other ways to heal with it. So I just put on a bow that I don't use too much. Got range, resolve gain, headshot damage, helmet piercing ammo, and shield piercing ammo. And then my Samurai Charm. This is what makes the Samurai extremely OP. I got melee damage on it, ultimate damage, with blessed strikes. Dealing, a, um, dealing melee damage also heals you while your class is active. So while my Raging Flame class ability is active, I am getting healed with every strike that I hit the enemy. And then I got Fire Master, increased fire damage by 25%. And that's why Raging Flame goes with this charm so fucking perfect. It makes it extremely OP. And then my uh, Kunai got melee damage, Ghost Weapon damage fired up, and Hidden Blades. Again, fired up with the Fire Master damage. Makes it hella OP, and same with my cow traps. Fired up with deep bags, ghost weapon damage, and status effect duration. Allowing my status effect from fire to last just a little bit longer on the enemies. So this is, uh, then, uh, yeah, this is my build right here. Absolute awesome build, not much health, but there's a great way to recover your health. As you can see, it's definitely an OP build, and uh, I think it'd be worthy of your guys' time. Let me know what you guys think of it. I absolutely enjoyed it. I enjoyed making the video. Hopefully, you guys decided to join me and grow on my channel on the road to 1K. This Tactical Chaos 1 Gaming, and I will catch you guys on the next video.